Hi there, my name is Brock Heath, Recreation and Parks Committee meeting. Today is April 27th, it's about 6 o'clock here. Um, we are here to get some more information and ultimately provide a recommendation to Council regarding Operation Recreation Committee request to place millage on the November 2016 ballot. I know we had a meeting the other day about this and weren't ready to move forward without some additional information, so I think this is going to take care of some of that. Um, and also, I, yeah, hopefully all of it. Um, and then I believe there are, maybe there was some confusion on what we're actually voting for and the different pieces that are going forward. From what I understand, uh, Patrick, if you don't mind explaining more on this, tonight is a recommendation really to allow the auditor to certify the millage, not necessarily put it up on the ballot. Is that right? Well, it's really up to you as to the direction you want to you want to take. Okay. What will happen, and I mean, one of the one of the questions, maybe maybe what we should do is go through this these questions and answers because mm -hmm. one of the answers, um, I can spell out the uh, the deadlines and the process to get it even on the ballot. And what you'll see is is that there's not a lot of time between the first piece and the second piece. Right to uh, start the three readings of the second piece right. and have a 30 day have the 30 day um, window. You know, window before it becomes effective um, so realistically I uh, tonight ought to be a discussion of does you know does the council want to just put this on the ballot uh, with or without an endorsement uh, mm -hmm. You know, at, a, at, at the minimum, what the stakeholders are asking is, is if they can just go on the ballot so that people can vote in November for right. it. Right. Uh, or against it, whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, so we've got these documentation, this documentation here. So what, what let's just go have, down. What you have is a, a three page memo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mrs. Knight um, recorded all of the questions. Um, I know there were. There seemed like there were a lot more questions that were asked. Many of them, though, were repeats, mm -hmm. um, and so we combined those and tried. You know, it might have been a slightly different question, but the answer is contained within the particular question that we listed. Okay. Um, we also updated um, after the discussion on Monday. We updated the um, the spreadsheet. Um, and we do have some extras here um, as well and can get more of, uh, uh, of the breakdown of all of the investments that the stakeholders are asking about. Uh, it does include the Miracle League uh, in the middle of the first, the top section uh, at uh, $500,000, but then you will see that uh, it's estimated that grants and foundations uh, would would pay for that amount. So if you follow that all the way to the right, that is not a uh, an investment that the levy would make. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and that is that was the direction that we were given by uh, the Miracle League in updating this. But we had several questions Monday night about it, and right. since it's it would be part of this complex, it really should be on this spreadsheet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so going down the list uh, of the questions uh, and answers, uh, the city parcel that the driving range would be built on, uh, that is uh, attached as page four. Um, actually, the blue outline is a portion of the, uh, uh, the driving range. That's the, the parcel is really split by Rutherford Drive. So what we're talking about is the north, uh, I guess the east part of Rutherford Drive. In addition, you do see a, um, a small rectangle east of the blue line. And then the city also owns the larger, uh, lighter parcel there. So it does, in fact, go beyond the tree line, uh, okay. but stop short of the, uh, the farm field that is farther east. Okay. So it goes over, it'll go over this way? So it goes that way. It's up here. Yeah. So you'll stand in the blue square and hit. And this is the farm field? Yeah. Yep. Is that, 
Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. That, right. Okay. It sideways. Okay. So that's that's the parcel that we're talking about. Um, and and yeah. a uh, from the golf superintendent um, that is at it more than adequate uh, space to put a nice driving range in okay um, at modest cost mostly automated so that it would minimize staff time other than just some general maintenance and ball shagging okay um, but uh, other than that it would be an automated process primarily so that's question one um, question uh, regarding the stakeholders was is there an individual or committee assigned for grants or fundraising there is a levy committee that is named the operation recreation levy committee or the ORLC that has been formed that has been created that is that list of folks that was included in your packet Monday night um, mr. Phillips uh, Radio going on? Um, oh, hi, Ken. I didn't see you back there. Uh, is there somebody here from stakeholder? Are you representing them this evening? Okay. Um, that's okay. So we uh, the the packet that you received the other night, the letter from the stakeholders included. I think it was on the third page, uh, the list of those members of that committee. That is the fundraising committee that we under as we understand it. So from that point on, rather than repeat o Operation Recreation Levy Committee, it's ORLC, so you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I had a conversation with uh, Jeremy Drake, the park superintendent, um, yesterday after Monday night's conversation to confirm um, maintenance needs and costs. Um, the additional cost to maintain that property uh, the Duke, the additional Duke land, Duke, Duke Park expansion land, um, would be approximately twenty-five thousand dollars, worst case, and that would be simply adding to our part-time seasonal staff mark budget, contract budget, uh, because that is seasonal work. Uh, there are there is additional work that's beyond the season and before the season, so it could stretch out to be almost a full year commitment with some of the other things that he's he's got going on there um, with the service demands um, but I want I want to note that when we estimate the 25,000 that's rounding that's conservative that does not assume any assistance from the stakeholders which we know will be the case we fully expect will be the case that was something that we've uh, we've talked uh, to them about from the first day that they <coughs> they approached us with this uh, uh, this and pre in previous just general plans. Um, so that twenty five thousand again, it's a uh, it's an estimate, but it's a conservative estimate. And based on the five year pro forma that you see periodically that you saw in the budget, um, the general fund resources could handle. Twenty-five thousand dollars. That's a very modest amount. Right. Um, so, as I stated Monday night, we are not talking about a huge impact to the uh, the park operating budget. Uh, but this, coupled with just general service demands, we know and had fully intended on analyzing their budget moving forward anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so we don't need any additional equipment. It really is just the bringing the the extra. The equipment, in. no, nothing <laughs> additional or specialized. Um, you know, it, it's important though that uh, we stay on the five year capital replacement plan right. that all the departments have. So it'll just be extra wear and tear and <clears throat> all of that. Sure. Right. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Phillips, I have a question. <clears throat> no, I wanted to dovetail on what Mr. Uh, Titterington was saying. And <clears throat> for the audience out there, I'm Bob Phillips. I am a city councilman. However, uh, in a different hat, I am the president of the Miracle League of the, ba uh, Miracle League of the Miami Valley, and I am the chairman of the uh, Operation Recreation Levy Committee and Fundraising Committee. On number two, uh, when you're talking about <coughs> operational costs, there have been conversations <coughs> with the stakeholders, particularly in the baseball arena, which I'll speak to right now, mm -hmm. in that 
to help defray costs the, uh, in the future, there will be some kind of agreements with the city and uh, the organizations listed here for uh, maintenance and upkeep so that the rotation of the seasonal things will minimize the impact to the city. They, uh, Troy Junior Baseball and the other organizations now uh, keep their fields and maintain them themselves and they have equipment. So in season, they're, they are accepting the responsibility for doing the same thing with this uh, city facility. So there is a lot of cooperation ongoing and partnership ongoing and in the future to help minimize and defray that $25,000 cost. So there's, uh, there's many aspects and moving parts in this, uh, but nothing can be tied down until this happens. You know, we can't have a, a lease agreement or a, uh, a, a maintenance agreement until those, these items are built and in place mm -hmm. and then everything is worked out. So there's mm -hmm. moving targets that it's going to be for the next couple of years. Yeah, that makes sense. And any of the, uh, the maintenance that people are agreeing to do once this moves forward, then they are willing to go into some kind of a written agreement for that? Absolutely, because, well, I'm not going to speak <coughs> explicitly to them. I mean, tie right. them down. Right. But that's what the conversations have been okay. uh, with uh, the city and these other organizations. Sure. Uh, the, uh, the hope is that if and when this project is completed, their maintenance costs are going to go down. Why? because of flooding right. and other issues that they have out there. They are in a, uh, they're in a really just barely got their heads above water right now mm -hmm. with the condition of the fields uh, and the infrastructure around there. There are water issues with toilets and concession stands, and they're in a floodplain with septic tanks. So when the water is up, things can't be used. So there are a lot of ongoing issues that is going to save them literally tens of thousands of dollars each year that they're not going to have to go out and fundraise for. So the money that they do have coming in will be uh, put to better use, even if it was a somewhat lease or rental agreement with the, with the city. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Yes. Okay. Um, yep. Oh, I have so, a question in regards to that. Yes, and I guess that's probably the best way to do this since there are so many different things. Each item, if anybody has any questions, yeah. let's shoot that over. Okay. I'm just wondering about insurance, city's insurance. If this is city property and city baseball fields and you've got um, other people doing the maintenance and using the equipment. We have that ongoing now at the Market Street facility. So that's not, it's a non-issue. It is. Uh, it's not a non-issue in that it's something that needs to be asked and it worked out, mm -hmm. and it is absolutely addressed today with other partnerships that we have within the city, and this will be of the same, same type. Yeah, I'd like to think that everybody could just work that way, but the way uh, people like to yeah, sue. Yeah, and just to clarify, um, you know, the the operations fall under our general recreational insurance, if you will, where. Um, uh, on a contract basis, there might be a term, a for-profit tournament that comes in where there's a fee charge for whatever reason. That would be kind of that would be treated similar to we would uh, our, our treatment of agreements, say the ones that we've got at Treasure Island, or when there's a special uh, arrangement at one of the parks. Um, and as part of that, then we would require some additional insurance from that particular promoter, vendor, tournament, purveyor, whatever, and so we would cover and be part of that additionally insured on their insurance policy. So we would be covered either way. And all of those are in agreements like the Gentleman of the Road, Strawberry Festival, et cetera, et cetera, on down. All of those have similar type agreements, hold harmlesses, and requirements for insurance to indemn indemnify the city, et cetera. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Mr. Tremley, do you have any questions on items one, two, or three so far? No. Is there anybody in the audience that has questions on one, two, or three? Let's just take this piecemeal because there is so much information. Any other city council members? Looks like we're good to go for item four. Okay. The uh, question was asked several times about a priority list of what will be funded. Um, and really, you know, that we haven't thought that way and as I mentioned Monday night uh, and I know the stakeholders don't either um, is that you know we don't th this was presented to us as a recreational package 
Um, their, their goal is to privately fundraise approximately 50% of the project and then uh, including city funding, of course. I guess we're a private part of this. But uh, with the remaining 50, 51% as part of the of a, of a levy. Uh, and so with all of the various stakeholders, even though the, the, uh, the, the ball complex and the Duke Park improvements are the overwhelming majority of the costs of this $14.8 million project, um, if, if it needs to be scaled back, if it is scalable because the, the, the overall goal isn't reached, then the, uh, each one of those projects should be scaled back. And just because the Senior Citizen Center is only $100,000, you know, should, that nece should they necessarily just, you know, not get any funding right off the top? And, and now we felt like it was premature to do that. Now, having said that, in the memo you'll see uh, just a reminder, uh, or maybe a little history for those who didn't know in the first place, but, or don't recall that, you know, when we did the, uh, the purchase of the farmland in Duke Park North, um, that was an initiative that was we were approached with due to the needs of the, the baseball folks and, and the conditions of the new fields. Granted, so, you know, they were the first ones to come to us. They were the ones that pushed us forward. At, the, at no time did we make any uh, concessions or promises um, or any give any timetables on going from just the farm field into a complex they recognized that that was a significant leap forward um, but uh, that nonetheless they were the f the first ones to really start this ball rolling uh, along with I think pretty much concurrently with the miracle field and the uh, miracle field uh, committee um, so as they started to look at recreational needs, that's where the Senior Citizen Center and the golf course needs were, were brought, into, uh, brought into play, um, as well as the soccer. I don't want to forget the soccer. So, so it, you'll see on the, on the top of page two, should the funding goals not be reached, uh, we, we would scale them back proportionately, uh, or at least look to do that. Uh, now, as I mentioned the, the, uh, the other night, the, uh, as, as large of a project as the Duke North project would be, um, trying to scale that back and still have something more than what they have out at New Fields, other than more consistency and less flooding, um, it, you know, there's, there's a limited ability to do that because we've already scaled it back from the best case scenario where we had the 12 or 13 fields. So uh, we have to look at that as well as whether or not we can even even do that. And, and at the end of the day, if, if uh, there's not enough funding and it doesn't make sense to do this, the, the land can continue to be farmed. You just passed a, a lease, um, ad, you know, for advertising for a farm lease out in that property. And it can be it can be farmed for the foreseeable future until the opportunity arises again, the need arises, or the resources are there to uh, to fully develop it. Uh, so you know, trying to prioritize and tell stakeholders, well, you guys are fourth and you guys are first. And the idea is not to pit one against the other, but to look at the whole group of amenities and and uh, how much proration we would we could or would be able to do maybe that brings up a question for mr. Phillips if uh, and this is kind of a scenario that may never happen but if a donor gives a hundred thousand dollars specifically for the senior center are they able to decide where it's going and if that happens and we have to scale it back the senior center only gets fifty thousand there could be some issues with them saying they gave a hundred thousand specifically for that. Uh, well, I'll jump further into the question here, where it mm -hmm. talks about what happens if funds are not generated, okay. or there's not enough funds, but some funds are. 
ten percent of the funds are generated and ninety percent not. Okay. Uh, so the levy doesn't pass, and we've got some private donation money. Okay, that's what you're usually talking about. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, then we would be probably be looking at something of refunding one hundred percent of the money back to those donors, because it just doesn't make sense uh, to do spread that out of the project. However, uh, the individual that donated that money may have the ability to fund uh, directly to the city or enter into a, another private-public partnership to do that outside of this. Mm -hmm. So there is some ability to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and because the uh, the fund that, that the Operation Recreation Group have opened at the Troy Foundation already to accept funds, mm -hmm. uh, private money in, uh, it will be absolutely tracked per person, per amount. It's held there. It's safe. It's not going to be uh, able to be uh, uh, any checks written out of by any of these stakeholders. It's strictly controlled by the Troy Foundation in our name. Now, all of these stake, well, uh, almost all of these stakeholders are 501c3 standalones themselves, so we're all tax exempt and uh, charitable uh, groups that can accept money directly to us, mm -hmm. and we don't have to share it or spread it around to anybody. Uh, okay. But uh, we did this so that none of our organizations would touch a nickel out of this, right. and that it would be 100% uh, controlled and uh, audited by the Troy Foundation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I think you answered what I, I need to wrap it around. The, so if, if that scenario happens, 100000 was given, 50000 to get scaled back, you'll just refund the whole 100000 Right. Okay, gotcha. To that individual or, or business or whoever. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. I sure. missed that. Uh, any questions from the committee on item four? Okay. Um, if, uh, if I may, uh, yep. uh, in just in addressing that. Now, within the committee, everybody has a particular agenda. Uh, however, I will agree with uh, Mr. Titterington in that uh, Troy Junior Baseball <laughs> is the largest piece of this pie, okay. uh, dollar amount and physical space, right. uh, and it is uh, the hub of this whole focus and, and generated all of this to bring it to, to where we are today. Mm -hmm. So uh, piecemealing things, as he indicated, does not make sense in some of these projects because of, of exactly what he said. You uh, you only do half, and then you got to come in and do the other half. The costs go up, right. and and some of these things are just unable to be done that way. Uh, so there will be have have to be looked at strictly from the stakeholders and from the city's perspective of as the contractor, as you if you will, and the property owner. Uh, there will have to be a lot of control that uh, the city will just naturally take that we have no control over as stakeholders. So uh, there will be some changing of roles of who drives what bus. Troy Junior Miracle League started driving this bus, partnered with the city, and then the build, they will drive that part of the bus. Okay. So. Yes, thank you for that. Looks like Mr. Terwilliger, you have a question? Baseball specific. The properties at Duke Field, if the, all teams leave there to go to Duke Park North, that land available for sale that could be funded back to or does it go to another entity? No, the second, second part of the question. Within this program, there are some government funded groups like the city funded, the senior citizens, Miami Shores, Duke North. There are a couple of groups who are probably. 501c3s that do have sources of raising revenue. Is there any payback for those people? Um, a part of that first answer is that the new fields are in the Miami, Miami County Parks uh, system in a trust. And if the uh, Troy Junior Baseball Organization abandons that property, it goes back to the park, uh, the Miami County Parks system. So there's no availability of selling that to anybody. It is flood uh, and it's of no real value to anybody. But the park system does want it back, and that's why Troy Christian High School is added onto this list, because they're going to lose the additional two fields on the other side of LD Road uh, when uh, Troy Jr. is out of that area. So they will be displaced, and they have no place else to pay or play, 
and they wanted to jump in as a stakeholder and, and have indicated that they do have buy-in and they will be buying in, uh, but there is no number as to what their contribution may be in a dollar amount at this point. Um, the second item was uh, cost uh, or money coming from some of these or organizations. Um, are you talking about the softball associations or were you talking about Midwest Ohio baseball or who were you talking about? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll talk about uh, Midwest Ohio baseball uh, as I've had many conversations with Mr. Westfall who is also the vice president of the Miracle League field uh, organization. Um, uh, Mr. Westfall came on board the Miracle uh, League uh, uh, board strictly as a an extreme proponent of inclusivity in our city and the ability to offer to our non-typical residents the ability to uh, join this sport and have it coupled with a little league organization in one facility. Uh, he, uh, he just happens to be the sole owner of Midwest Ohio Baseball. The project does not benefit him per se, however, he does have the ability to bring large-scale uh, statewide and national, uh, nationwide tournaments into this facility uh, if these organizations or baseball teams wish to do one in this general area. So there is an economic development component from his organization into this where it would be as large or larger than uh, uh, comparatively to the Troy Strawberry Soccer Festival and they have the ability to do this on an ongoing basis. So if the facility meets the standards of the other teams and that sort of thing, it has a very strong uh, high dollar uh, appeal to them and a benefit to the city of Troy uh, as they trickle down through the businesses, restaurants, uh, hotels, and, and the like. As to the Troy uh, softball organizations, uh, if they have tournaments where they would use the fields on a rental basis, there, I believe there is a fee, a small fee that is charged for that type of activity, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'll, I'll, I'll let Mr. Tudor okay. answer that part of the question. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about specific uh, structured fees. Uh, I guess the best way to answer that part of your question, uh, Mr. Twilliger, is uh, it really in two ways. Number one, as we discussed a little bit earlier, um, you know, we would expect to have agreements with those. Um, special uses, the tournaments, uh, particularly um, the, the for-profit type tournaments, um, so that we get a return and we can recoup uh, uh, the cost of maintenance and depreciation on the fields. Um, and number two, uh, my understanding anyway is is that the, uh, uh, the stakeholder group, um, each one of those entities is reviewing their own financial structure and their financial um, strength uh, and you know if they're not as able to provide ongoing volunteer support for maintenance instead they're able to uh, help underwrite some of the capital costs and that's why that column that you see related to private fundraising does not you know it's all lumped in uh, and grouped and not spread out because we don't know uh, and have not been told or, or haven't gotten specific commitments. Uh, you know, one group, for example, had looked at uh, per potentially purchasing their own land to develop some of their recreational needs. Well, by not doing that, they're saving and, and they're able to do things here much more cost effectively. Well, if they were planning on dedicating the uh, resources to that investment, now they're better able to assist with, with this so those are conversations that are ongoing again that's my understanding because I'm not in those committee meetings um, but uh, uh, they have not been resolved yet and but that is why they are only asking for what they are asking from the levy and they're forcing the issue on the private side uh, in and among themselves Does that make sense are there any other questions on item four from the audience or other council members? Looks like we're ready for five. Five. Uh, why should la uh, Troy's landowners fund these improvements when participants from outside of Troy may use them? First and foremost, um, these 
the, the list of amenities was developed based on where uh, the stakeholders felt the best impact for Troy's residents, in particular our youth, would benefit. Uh, my understanding predates me um, that prior to the new fields, Detroit baseball programs were actually in Troy. The activity was in Troy, the fields were in Troy, everything happened in Troy. Uh, so now they go outside of town, and this is an opportunity to bring it back inside of town for our community members. Uh, the same is true about the, uh, the senior citizen center. I'm not a member, but I, I believe that to be a member, you gotta be a Troy resident, I think. How old I'm not yet a member. And 55. Let's put that it's and 55. Well, and so I'm not yet a member. I'm uh, <coughs> almost there. Be careful because I am. Uh, I understand. <laughs> not, nothing wrong with that. But my point is, is that you know the 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 first objective of the Operation Recreation was to provide advanced, enhanced, expanded uh, opportunities for our residents. And uh, when you look at the breakdown. I think it becomes pretty apparent. Secondly, though, um, these amenities, um, you know, yes, if they attract outside teams, uh, if they attract visitors, uh, competitors, spectators, then um, that's marketing our community. Um, hopefully they'll want to live, work, and visit again and again here in Troy, uh, which then has uh, a, a direct impact on our economic development. Uh, and so that's certainly, I think, uh, a positive goal that an objective of this, uh, uh, of their request. And then third, as we heard Monday night, and I can't remember who it was, but uh, on, the, on the baseball side, well, it was Mr. Felton um, from uh, Troy Junior Baseball, that based on their rosters, uh, there are relatively few outside of Troy who belong and participate in that program. And so that just reinforces item one, which is it's an amenity for our residents, our youth. All right. Any questions on five from either of you? Anybody out there? And it looks like you have a comment, Mr. Phillips. Uh, well, as, a, as an additional comment, reading the, the, uh, uh, the, the question strictly, uh, when we of Troy here go to an outside park in another city, we don't pay to use their park if we right. went there. So, you know, this is kind of a, a special thing if you were going to do a for-profit event, then there would be, somebody would be paying that, and that would be the organization here in town that would be hosting or, or contracting to do that. So that's where you would pay for that. However, each community supports its own projects. You, you have projects here, you have amenities here, we pay for it. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Titterington. Yes, Mr. Twist. Do we have numbers? Please approach the microphone. Name well, you know. Siri, uh, uh, you still got young legs. I guess I have to reach a certain age when I can <laughs> stay in my seat. Yeah, <laughs> you still got young legs. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have a question. Do we have numbers on how many? Uh, residents use the Troy senior citizens how many patrons we have utilizing Miami Shores or golfing there and I know they had the number of people that are affected for Troy junior baseball but do we have any I'm sure we I'm sure they have it and we can get it yeah that would be and now um, it may be a little more difficult to see who's actually in Troy versus you know they may have I, I would just say data. who's utilizing but, that yeah I would and, assume 90 percent of those are sure. Troy residents Mm -hmm. Mr. Twist, was that the reasoning why you wanted the information just to see the breakdown on who's a Troy resident, who's not? Not necessarily who's a Troy resident, but to see the usage of the facilities and making that a return on our investment of why we need to sure. make these improvements. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. So right. that's the reason. If there's 10 people visiting the senior citizen, they're not. Just to make sure right. if people are aware of that. There's not, but making sure that the usage is there and obviously uh, the other thing that might be helpful is the age uh, demographics in the city of Troy are getting older. So you could have an increase of people utilizing or or maximizing that usage also. So that, okay. Just wanted to make sure we were answering your question yeah. correctly. 
Patrick, when you do those, could you send all of us, all of council, please? Yes, as, as usual, I will do that, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. and including the Troy Baseball numbers, too. Uh, we'll reach out and get as much information as we can from them on membership, participants, and the like. Perfect. Can't the, promise that it'll be perfect information, but we're relying, you know, on them. Ballpark. In the um, <laughs> in the first packet you had the other evening uh, with the council of the whole and the two uh, 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 park and recreation committees, you had those numbers for all of the baseball organizations and the soccer organization. <laughs> I will tell you right now for the Miracle League we would have a, a potential uh, target of over 200 participants annually. That is not the total number of the folks that would fit the criteria for that because that is a larger number, but dwindle that down to folks that would probably actually use and play or participate is around 200 as provided by Riverside DD. And I imagine there's probably not a lot of organizations out there in other cities that do this for that population so they're probably going to be drawing from other cities no no that is strictly Miami County okay uh, we have reached out to Springboro mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Miracle League down there that is operated by the Y okay and the Dublin facility uh, and we are looking at having tournaments enter uh, the organizations okay as they are Miracle League affiliated also okay so uh, you know it would just it would just be like a regular little league organization. All right. Thank you. I uh, don't see any other comments or questions on this item. Oh, Mr. Twiss is back. No. Uh, the soccer one doesn't have the number of people. It just says age group. So if we could get to say, on, say, soccer, but those levels were. Got well, it. we'll do what we can. Got it. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. I was at the meeting yesterday that did these, did each one of these group members, were they able to speak? Why they no, they had one. Uh, they had one spokesperson that was up here, but I believe just about everybody was represented everybody in the audience. Was well, excuse me, the soccer folks were not here. We're not there. They, in the middle and of the I, season. I will apologize uh, for the stakeholders uh, in a roundabout way because they are up to here in season with baseball and soccer, and uh, getting them in evening or afternoon meetings is it's harder than us council and stuff. So, so they're. They're very understandable. I just want to make sure they have the opportunity yeah. to speak at these events well, for their sake of their clubs and their things that they're doing. I will tell you that the uh, personally the emails are going out through our secretary of the uh, committee to the organization, so they are kept up to the second with all of the information that's coming in. And there's one sitting right behind you that can attest to that. Perfect. Thank you. Looks like nothing else on five unless Mr. Twiss has another question. Uh, let's move on to number six. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the question was asked, you know, what is, generally speaking, I think, uh, what is the need for these improvements? Um, we've talked about the new fields and, uh, you know, their benefit as well as their challenges. So right. we probably don't uh, need to dwell on that any further. No. Um, in talking with uh, Mr. Seiler, the recreation director, um, the Troy Soccer Club, which is one of the largest clubs in the Miami Valley, particularly in terms of the draw that they have for uh, the annual strawberry tournament, soccer tournament. Uh, I believe uh, with the number of teams that they bring, that is the, uh, they are in the top three in the Miami Valley. Uh, at least uh, they recently have been ranked that high um, with 300 20 to 350 teams that they bring. Um, uh, that, so that is a, a very large, um, popular organization and event. Uh, with Say Soccer, with the recreational soccer programs, they've all been increasing. Demand for the fields um, is is constant and, and getting more and more pressure. Um, with the, uh, uh, the Troy, the, the strawberry soccer tournament for example uh, we use every field in Troy uh, we also use the uh, the high school practice football field we use the f uh, the practice fields I guess or the large fields next to the uh, uh, to the junior high uh, in addition uh, we've used fields in uh, Vandalia, Piqua, uh, I want to say Newton 
as well as um, uh, Tip City. Um, so we use you know plenty of fields there. So that that kind of explains the needs uh, that they have. Uh, Senior Citizen Center. That facility is aging. I apologize. I ran out of time, or I would have told you what the age of that facility is. Uh, but it is an older facility. As I mentioned Monday night, though, over the past 10 years, we've continued to invest and reinvest in their basic infrastructure. So the bones of the building are very good. Um, they've had new air conditioning, new HVAC. Um, the roof is getting old and uh, has been patched together because there have been there's at least one addition that was done um, 10 or more years ago, uh, well over 10 years ago. Uh, and so that that does need some uh, some capital improvements there. Uh, the clubhouse uh, that has substandard concession, electrical, plumbing, storage, and restroom facilities. Um, the uh, the drive adding a driving range would add additional golf course use, uh, as well as provide many more opportunities for uh, attracting tournaments, um, regional and larger. Uh, the park maintenance facility is located currently uh, across right next to Hobart Arena, uh, and after the uh, uh, the project, if the arena is finished, it will be within 15 feet of that building. Um, it is aging; it is undersized for the park operations uh, and maintenance and the storage needs that they have. Uh, re relocating that facility to to uh, Duke Park, where the uh, the storage barns are, would create a lot of efficiency. Uh, for them. Um, those are the major stakeholders, if you will, uh, the major um, um, beneficiaries of Operation Recreation Levy uh, committee funding. So I think that's that covers all of them. I think that covers how many uh, How many extra soccer fields are we getting out of? Uh, we'll have three, but they will be the larger ones, okay. which is uh, what appears to be the most demand. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's utilizing also the McDade property, uh, which somebody told me we've owned for 25 years. Okay. Uh, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah. And that is that farmland that is directly south of the of the Duke Park. I mean, it's part of Duke Park, but it's the undeveloped park on the south southern end of it. Okay. So we're going to add a soccer field in there. Three. Three, that's, three. that's where they will be. Yes. I gotcha. Okay. As well as one of the biggest concerns that we have, both tournament, both during tournaments as well as just regular play, like today, uh, is a severe lack of parking out there. Mm -hmm. And so, when you look at the designs and the plans that are that are on the boards, um, it does add a lot of parking, as well as, as uh, Mr. Cappers mentioned Monday night, there is only one entrance into all of Duke Park. Uh, adding Duke Park North and Duke Park South will add two additional uh, entrances and exits, uh, as well as will connect all three of those sections, if you will, North, Central, and South, uh, internally. Okay. And uh, speaking of parking, the park maintenance facility, that will just turn into parking for Hobart Arena? Um, yes, that, that's correct. Okay. Um, whether the building would be torn down immediately or not, you know, if, if nothing else, then it could serve as uh, off-site storage for city facility needs specific to or in addition to the arena. Perfect. Any questions from the committee on this item? No. Good. Mr. Chair, yes. I, I may again dovetail with Mr. Titterington as an advocate for the Senior Center, Senior Center and for Miami Shores. Uh, the clubhouse has not been touched since the 80s, potentially, from a, as I understand from the executive committee president. Uh, and uh, the write-up that I have is the electrical wiring is horrible and in some cases dangerous because of age uh, and the wattage and you know uh, with your uh, breakers and that sort of thing with older things. And then today, overloading those circuits is a dangerous thing. It is really an unpleasant and a non-tenable, non-rentable. Uh, thing for weddings and other things that have been asked to occur over there, but when they go in and inspect the facilities, it just doesn't meet the requirements or the requests of, of the folks in the public that want to use that. Sure. As an advocate for the senior center, 
we uh, going through the Treasure Island Hobart Arena uh, financing and breakdown and inspection of all those buildings, we threw a significant amount of money at the marina building, and it still had issues, and it cost us a, a substantial amount of money that we have recently put into that building to bring it up to a use. We can't let either the clubhouse at the Miami Shores or the Senior Center get into that those conditions, and they need to be maintained. Or the, they've been maintained. But for the uses that they're undergoing today, they're just inadequate. And potentially, it could be a safety issue. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on this item from the audience or council? It's like we're good for seven. You ready, Mr. Tittrington, for number I, uh, seven? Uh, uh, the seventh question was why uh, is this being fast-tracked if you will uh, why can't it go slower um, you know it's it's it ha really hasn't been fast-tracked uh, at least components of it uh, it may appear that way um, the you know the most visible the largest part of this is related to the ball field and, and Duke Park North as I mentioned earlier that was the initiative that really started this analysis and the stakeholders getting together that and the miracle league uh, or miracle field um, initiative uh, but other components uh, have been um, waiting for a number of years um, including the clubhouse renovations which we have uh, design plans from Oh, Ken, what, 15 years ago? Is that about when the ones that we looked at? Maybe? No. That's, no, not since I've been here. It was before no, it was that. Before that. Oh, you mean when they did the change? No, when they've, uh, the last set of plans that we have predated 2007. I guarantee that. Uh, but at least 10 years, if not, I, I believe it was 10 years or, or longer since it was looked at just just looked at and some drawings made nothing <clears throat> nothing happened not the most recent changes um, that were actually done to the concessions uh, area and other other areas but even back then they knew that there were inadequacies there that that needed to be addressed um, so that's been waiting for uh, uh, for a number of years the um, the additional soccer fields as I mentioned, also the McDade property we've owned for 25 years or more. Uh, the driving range, uh, we've analyzed and reanalyzed that over at least the last five years, probably longer than that. That, I do say, was happened while I was here, but it's been five to seven years um, <coughs> since we talked about that. Um, and again, the, uh, the clubhouse over well over 10 years. Um, to get away from the word fast tracking but why november and not next year uh, i believe it was mr dunn that asked monday night uh, that question um, with regards to the soccer uh, to the duke park improvements um, or the overwhelming majority of them um, would require a long construction period uh, probably off season would require a season for the grass and the dirt and everything to um, mature enough to be able to be played on. Uh, and so every year, every period, every, every election that you wait could potentially add a year before those new facilities, those, those amenities would be available. Um, so if there's urgency, it's from that standpoint. Um, the um, the new fields every time that they flood and there's damage um, it is uh, my understanding that that is tens of thousands of dollars in repair work or replacement work to fencing uh, to uh, to infields uh, even to some of the structures out there if it's a particularly bad event uh, in the past they have been able to um, rely in part anyway on uh, foundation different foundation support um, we're understanding and one of the impetuses for them to come to us about the uh, the farm field purchase uh, was that um, 
the ability for those foundations to continue to support the annual repair and replacement cycle, if you will, um, was uh, becoming more and more difficult for them to fund uh, with all the other priorities, uh, probably with some of the investment uh, income that they receive uh, and some of the other service demands that they have. Perfect. Any questions on this? How long has Troy Junior Baseball been out at the new fields? Uh, Since the 1970s. Yeah. There it is. It's got to be thousands. Last uh, two of thousands. years ago, I believe it was when they had the uh, extensive problem. It was over $100,000 they had to scramble for that one year alone. Do they regret their decision to put this into a floodplain? Uh, well, <laughs> Some of those decisions back then uh, seemed like very, very good ideas at the time, quite honestly. Uh, and there, there's a lot of history there that I'm just not aware of. And in fact, most of the folks that are at the, that are on the board or using that facility now have no concept of why. True. Uh, but they have just been stuck with it because of. That's where it is. Yes. Yeah. So. And, and uh, when it's dry, it's, it's a great facility. Sure. It's just, well, it, it is. It is a fair facility. Uh, I will say that I spent some time out there at opening day this last weekend, and because of of the um, the love and attention to what they put into that in the repairs, uh, they have done a fair job. But there are some real serious inadequacies because of the damage that's been done to ground, uh, wash away of, of earth and the fill and stuff, and, and the levelness and other things that come into play there. So there are some deficits. And I think that's probably something that will come up. I know I've heard people talk about, well, they should never have been there in the first place. It was out. The folks and today people was outside want to know. control. My understanding, though, and this is hearing at third or fourth hand, that that land was provided for them, and so there was a <coughs> so significant saving for the land, and sure. so it made sense yeah, for them so. to expand mm -hmm. out there. Right. But I bet the that's time. something people so. will want to hear discussed. Well, that, um, that, that piece of land was was corn, soybeans and corn, their, their fields were scattered all over Troy. It was very difficult to work a program around that. This piece of land came free, basically, mm -hmm. and so therefore they jumped on it mm -hmm. because the city of Troy was not going to have a facility. So that's the best thing they had. Then after a few flooding events, it became apparent that, gosh, we wish we had some other place. They've been talking about that for 25 years. Um, when we bought the farm a year ago, Duke Park North, everyone says this is fast track. Well, that's what I thought. That's where I thought we were headed <laughs> to begin with. That's a year ago. As far as the final drawings, that that was kind of new to me. I had I'm not on the committee, but I knew it was coming. So I wasn't like completely broadsided as some people thought. So to um, to be piggyback on Mrs. Oda's. Um, uh, comment about educating and, and getting to understand part of that question in seven is why can't this go slower to have time to review and understand um, I guess you know just to and maybe this didn't come across very well from the stakeholder presentation Monday night but our understanding uh, from the stakeholders is, is that what they are asking is for the council to simply put it, the, the issue on the ballot uh, in November, would they like a an endorsement from the council? I'm sure they feel that that would be a, uh, more of a benefit than a, a detriment to to this levy. But they know that the work, the education, the understanding, that's their that's part of their commitment and part of their work that they know that they have ahead uh, ahead of them from you know from May until November uh, November eighth. Um, so just wanted to clarify that, that I don't think was very clear Monday night. And as uh, from the stakeholder and operation committee, uh, operation recreation committee, we understand that totally. We know that there's going to be a lot of homework and footwork, and we have to treat this just like uh, if I was running for a, an elected position and had to pound the pavement. We will have to do the same thing with mailers, phone calls, meetings. Uh, and, and that sort of thing. But 
an endorsement from any organization, whether it's a private entity or a governmental agency, goes a long way, obviously. And since uh, this uh, project is, is kind of being pushed by private organizations and nonprofits, it is to the betterment of the city of Troy and the residents. So I, I would hopefully expect that there would be uh, verbal support and uh, vote support uh, to it because it is a vote of the citizenry whether they want to go forward or not. This is not a council decision of going forward or not. It's just placing it on the ballot. But then when the project is there or, or if it is voted in, then the support uh, would hopefully come from our members, fellow members of council and that sort of thing. Perfect. Are there any more questions <clears throat> or comments out there on this item? If not, we will go on to uh, number eight, and I think this one is item eight. Is this a, is the ballot schedule. This is an important one uh, to it try is. to get. So let me work backwards. Yep. I can work forwards if somebody wants me to do it that way backwards as well. Sounds but, great. Um, <laughs> so the, the 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 magic date is November eighth. That's the presidential election. Um, to meet the thirty day or to get on the ballot. Uh, the second piece of legislation by the council would have to be filed and cer certified to the Board of Elections on or before August 10th. All right, that's mm -hmm. state law. That's the, dead, that's the timeline in advance of the election that it has to be to them. To make sure that there are three readings, 30 days, counting backwards on the, avail on the uh, council meetings and not assuming any special meetings. Um, the first reading of that ordinance to place it on the ballot would be June 6th. Again, that, that would, should provide three readings and 30 days before August 10th. Um, before that ordinance is read, as I mentioned Monday night, the first, or, uh, the first I think it's a resolution, um, which could be at the May 16th meeting, if not sooner, would be um, the resolution asking the county auditor, the Monday night I mentioned Board of Elections, but it's actually the auditor to certify back to the council the amount of millage that would be required to provide X amount of funding per year. Um, that turnaround is then, they say two or three days is all it takes them to turn that around so we could go from one meeting to the next and start the, uh, and start the second piece of legislation uh, directly thereafter. Uh, it is, you know, we do have a meeting May 2nd, next Monday, uh, so time, the time element is creeping up on us. The first, the, that first resolution would have to, to keep the rest of the schedule not crunched mm -hmm. uh, or compressed. Uh, that first resolution would be uh, necessary to be passed by suspension of the rules and as an emergency measure. But again, all that's doing is asking the county auditor to tell us how many mills or pieces, uh, parts of mills uh, would be required for a certain amount mm -hmm. to be collected. I will say from the committee standpoint, I will take the responsibility for the fast track or the uh, scheduling of this because we have been dealing with so many issues within the committee that this was on our punch list to look at for the balloting and time frame and all of this that we're dealing talking about right now and we hadn't gotten to that step yet so when we came to the city and approached them and asked hey here's the here's the proposal i'll take that responsibility for taking that short time lapse if you will but it's right. not there was nothing hidden or anything that just was a lapse in our lack of knowledge on that particular issue thank you for that clarification the Resolution can be, the rules can be suspended on that. Does it have to go to three readings on the ordinance or we can suspend no, the rules on that as well? We can do that but this well. is just We just didn't want to presume. Right, that. right. And really those are the two different items. So there's going to be two items. One is just for the auditor to, to look at the numbers. And right. he's just going to come back. Then the other one is, okay, now we've got the numbers. Now we vote to put it on the ballot. And based, again, based on what has been presented to us from the stakeholders and with our calculations and the breakdown of the levy versus the non-levy uh -huh. support estimates, um, you know, the, the bottom small chart there within a chart, I guess, right. uh, shows that 
the, uh, a 10 year expiring after 10 years uh, capital millage uh, would be two mills or less mm -hmm. and with the numbers that are there uh, Mr. Fox uh, brought up uh, at the uh, combined meeting uh, the other evening uh, was this enough well our committee has talked about that and there is a larger number out there that can be thrown out there but there has to be a compromise of some sort and uh, asking for the moon of the citizenry of our town uh, just didn't seem the prudent thing to do but we're not asking for the basic package this is somewhere in the middle that we believe is a very saleable and very livable number mm -hmm. that has come into play uh, so that's that's why we are where we are today the future expansion of the baseball fields that's why they were cut back and some of the amenities that are that are listed well, will be listed or are on the cost sheet that have been taken out to bring that number down. So we're not looking to have Great America Ballpark here in Troy, but we're going to have a very nice diamond, right? so to speak. I guess while we're on the technicalities, is is there any role for the Parks Department and the Recs Department as far as recommendations and things in this, or we don't? Well, you received a positive recommendation from the Park Board, from the parks. Which, is, it, which would be the board that should uh, give you a recommendation mm -hmm. because at least part of the amenities are on property that is outright <coughs> owned by the park board versus the general city of, of Troy yeah. um, where the recreation board you know it was concerned since they are active participants they are the uh, programmers for a recreational programming mm -hmm. to exclude them from the discussion Monday night would you know would probably not have shown a lot of consensus building um, you know they asked some good questions uh, they didn't feel comfortable moving forward with a formal recommendation but I think you heard from everyone on, on that board that they were in support of the idea the concept the uh, uh, the plan they just had some questions uh, much like you did right right but uh, as far as a formal recommendation from the Recreation Board that's not required it's not the same as it would be from coming from the uh, park mm -hmm. Board, which is a little more formal and really tonight this recommendation is we can either move on one or both is that right uh, y yes I mean right if we you're gonna do one. do one you might might as well do the other but right. you know it just putting it on if you have one reading or three readings on the uh, the second piece of legislation you're still deliberating over it mm -hmm. as a second step mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you didn't do both tonight uh, of course it's up to the uh, the president of council it may just get the issue might be assigned back to this committee or another committee right to to discuss the second step so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so we'll continue to go through this as a few more items and then we'll talk about whether we want to recommend one or both or not okay um, any questions out there for number eight as far as the ballot scheduling looks like we're good on that so let's do nine all right another question that was asked is if insufficient private resources are raised but the levy passes can the levy be rescinded or repealed uh, we have checked with the county and the state and uh, they say yes council can do that uh, by legislative act um, so you know if if in the event that comes to <coughs> fruition or that scenario plays out and we can't prorate we can't prioritize and we have to say no we're just not going to do it then there is a mechanism to uh, to rescind that levy and what's the scheduling on that so it gets passed in November the taxpayers wouldn't see that on their taxes until 2017 17, that's correct and mr. Uh, Phillips what's the timeline as far as when we'll know whether we have enough private funding or not uh, we are when we do start going to the our donor list we will be asking for a multi-year pledge mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, some will be very large uh, we uh, won't know that until we actually get into that process. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of a chicken and an egg thing that goes on both sides of this, the fundraising side and the levy side. So uh, we are speaking to a couple 
of donors right now. Uh, we won't know anything about that maybe for the next few months. I don't know. Uh, that's strictly up to them and their processes. So that is hard to, to speak to, but we are asking for multi-year pledges. And I think maybe the reason I was asking this may be a different question. If we'll know that yes or no before anybody gets this taken out of their, their taxes. So any, there's no refunding of money in the future, things like that. Well, um, that is certainly the hope. Of course, that's up to the stakeholders and the fundraising committee. Mm -hmm. uh, but my understanding is, is that that is their goal mm -hmm. um, to at, either have the money in place or the pledges to back, right. that, back that up in multiple years, mm -hmm. um, which is appropriate as long as it's 10 years or less. I think we're looking at five years max is what the, the objective is. Uh, the reason being that, you know, if, if this plan is adopted, that would be a financing, there would be a financing involved, 10-year uh, financing window. Okay. It just sounds like a not a fun process to get to collect this extra tax money and then two years later have to refund because it didn't pass and that sounds I, like a I, bad uh, process i think the administration and mr kerber um, <coughs> all agree with you wholeheartedly yeah perfect any questions from the committee so we would be getting monies from the levy over 10 years and we'll be getting monies from contributions hopefully over five years so we would be borrowing the sum at the beginning and paying it over time that's correct that's and, and I would note the taxes are collected one year in arrears as well. So really yeah. 17 would be collected in 18. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, well, yes, except that the, the legislation would be written so that the first year of collection would be next year on this year's uh, tax. Yeah. Okay. That's different. So you get ahead we of We already the, had that conversation with uh, another funder. So. Okay. And the reason for that is just to get ahead of the curve on that and start collecting well uh, you know as part of the um, it goes back to my original comment regarding fast tracking or mm -hmm. you know why uh, they want to move forward and that is that construction needs to happen it's a yeah. seasonal uh, process and there's some significant improvements that need to be made and every year that you delay revenues or uh, construction season just costs at least a year in the new amenities. Yeah. Mrs. Odey, do you have any? Uh, just to confirm that? with Bobby, if if the levy fails, it's dead in the water. Any private monies collected so far would go back to those donors. Um, there have there has not been any money collected by this fundraising committee. Okay. At this point. But then if the levy would fail, back to the drawing board. I'm going to make that assumption, yes. Okay. Thank I did you. one more question. Yes, um, Mr. Trimble. On uh, what we would do, we have to determine what millage would raise what we want, $8 million. Uh, now, we, we ask for a, an amount. Now, if, if houses are built over the 10 years, since the amount of money is going to be the same, the amount people are paying per household, their effective millage then goes down over the 10 years. It, uh, it's been a while since I have uh, had that conversation with the county, um, but I believe you're correct. I mean, the, the, and that's why the first piece of legislation is to the county saying, how much millage do we need for this particular amount? The amount that you're certifying to them is, is that, um, we need $936,400 a year. County, how many mills based on our assessed value of property in Troy at this date and time will collect $936,400? And at least one scenario, and I'm not going to promise this again because I haven't had the conversation that I can't be. That's, that's, that's shorthand. They are re, they do reevaluate it each year, uh, and and my understanding has always been that nine hundred thirty six thousand four hundred dollars is the cap that we're going to collect. And so yes, there would be some cha adjustments made downward to individual properties uh, as as we continue to grow our assessed value in Troy. Anything else on that item from the crowd? 
It's like we're ready for the next <laughs> crowd. There's a crowd. <laughs> oh, yes. Audience. Sure. Uh, yeah, we would, the, well, not only is it considered John, uh, that's John Wilson, our, our uh, relatively new executive director of the uh, Troy Main Street. He didn't have to stand up either. Uh, honeymoon is, honeymoon <laughs> is clearly, uh, yeah, yeah, smile for the camera. Just twist. Um, so, yeah, see, he didn't, he didn't have to come up to the mic, Mr. Chase. He's, <laughs> he's not a Steelers fan um, is the problem. He's not, that's true. Um, bonds, we would use bonds. The difference with riverfront development and this project is is that the bonds that we're borrowing for um, riverfront are coming out of the existing general fund resource stream if you will um, which will not maximize our bonding capacity but our, our re resources and as we looked at the five-year pro forma for the general fund we can support that um, these would be done as 10-year bonds and that's why multi-year um, pledges can be supported. Uh, and that's why the millage ask is spread over 10 years. And the mill th thus the millage goes down every year and, and would be able to expire after 10 years when those bonds are totally defeased. Okay. Yes, absolutely. One question. Yes. The estimated millage, is that just estimated? It is at this point. And again, the only way that goes from estimated to real is when the county comes back. They're the only ones that can tell us, no, you don't need 2.2 2 mills, you need 1.94. And so to get to that point, we have to say. You do the move first forward. piece of legislation. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, our recommendation would be that. If you look at that chart, um, just to to make sure that we cover interest any interest rate variance, uh, any economic forecasting changes, um, that it would be around one million dollar a round number of one million dollars, and then get a, a millage number on that, and we're still we're still told that we, that would probably be a little less than two mills. If I might add, kind of to Mr. Wilson's uh, point, there were other options of funding this discussed between the city and uh, the committee. Um, and internally, the city, uh, well, there was much discussion back and forth. It was around Robin. And there were many aspects from the economic development from the whole city side and other businesses affected. Uh, an income tax versus this and other things. And this one was the one that made the most sense uh, to spread that out through the population and impact on the lowest dollar amount per property that we could. Makes sense. And I think we've covered nine and even some of ten. Is there anything additionally that you want to say on that? Or are there any questions on these items? We talked about considering a higher levy amount. Um, yeah, again, and all that's, that. that's, yep. a, that's a council decision, but again, the stakeholders, when they came to us uh, and we discussed the, the different scenarios with them, uh, they did make it clear that they didn't want to ask for 100% for a levy. Mm -hmm. uh, they knew that would be extremely challenging right. uh, to even contemplate that, and they felt that they could tap other resources uh, internal to those stakeholder groups as well as um, external groups and individuals that have a passion for these amenities mm -hmm. and, and through the demographic that that I have personally spoken to uh, it was from a single retired income much like my family uh, and my fellow senior citizen center members uh, and then other other folks with families throughout the community that have expressed their opinion on this so uh, we would be if the council, if you would recommend to council that you uh, ask for five mills, we'd be exceedingly happy with that from the committee standpoint. But that's going to be on you. <laughs> I think we're not going to do that. So. <laughs> I didn't think you would. Um, and it looks like we've gone through all the information here. I don't think uh, there are any questions or comments at this point. If there's any last final, throw your hand up. But uh, 
Thank you for your time. Sure, appreciate it. Um, just want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Tedrington and everybody else that's worked on this. You've put a lot of information here for us, and that um, feels better than it did the other day, just to be honest. I think uh, it's a great program. A lot of people are in support of it. It just felt um, rushed, like we talked about, and then the information, uh, there were a lot of answers, uh, questions that weren't able to be answered yet. This is a much better uh, feel for me personally anyway. Um, so I think it makes sense for us to move forward, especially with the first item. The question that I want to pose to the committee here is what do you think about the second item? I'm doing that all at the same time. I feel like that all the questions that we've had were answered and uh, to pretty satisfactorily. Um, I feel comfortable with moving forward with both pieces now just to keep things on the timeline. But I want to hear from both of you as well. Mrs. Oda? I would kind of rather do it a piece at a time just to make sure that we're given time for thought and any other questions that may come up. Just by thought. So we've got a recommendation from that side, Mr. Tremblay. Uh, if we've got enough time, it's, I'm okay with waiting for the second piece. But um, how fast are we going to get this number from the auditor? Well, if, it, uh, if, if the legislation, the first piece of legislation were passed uh, Monday night, that we would expect that we would get uh, numbers or a number from the county by the end of the week. Uh, by the end of that week, um, that would allow you time to reconvene if Mrs. Uh, Baker wants to wants the committee to this committee or another committee to con to convene, since it's up to her to who she assigns right. these issues to. Um, you would have that additional week there to uh, to have another meeting. Right. And we'd have that number then. And we'd have that number for that meeting, and that would right. be prior to the to the May 16th. It's a 16th meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we'd have Two time for another committee meeting in there. Right. It's a tight window, but I, I could do it that way. Yeah. I think uh sounds like the recommendation of um, all of us, and I, I'm fine with that as well. Let's move forward with the resolution and recommending that to council. Um, and then what's that? Is emergency. As emergency. Right. Um, and then wait on the second piece until we get the information back from the county and 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 do it based on a an even one million ask, ask for millage based on one million dollars uh, to come up with a calculated millage amount rather than the 963 four oh I see what you're saying yeah. I got you okay gotcha okay so uh, are you both comfortable with that yes I am so it'll be this committee's recommendation to move forward with the resolution at a even million um, and then we'll wait on the next piece. As emergency. This is as emergency, yeah. yes. Thank you. Okay. Are there any comments from anyone on uh, in the crowd and uh, or from council or anything like that? What's that? <laughs> he wants me to call you an audience. I'm calling you crowd. I, you look like a crowd to me. Um, At least you didn't say riot. So. We're gonna, mob. We didn't say mob. Um, looks like we're going to be done with this information. I think we've had plenty of information here. Are there any other items to come before us today? No, if not, then we are going to be adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for your work, and Mr. Phillips for your being able to answer the questions, everybody else for coming out. This is an issue that uh, we needed to take care of and everybody's worked hard on, so thank you for that.